Hi guys, I will explain the tire brush model related to longitudinal slip from concept to modeling for non-linear reason. Here I have a quiz for you. What is the best description for a tire brush model? Number one, every bristle of a brush model has the same stiffness. Number two, every bristle of a brush model has different stiffness. If the tire is radially divided at the regular intervals, tire tread becomes a square shape. And the tire contact patch can be expressed as the inside of a green circle. Uh, this is called a tire brush model because it looks like a brush in the side view. Here, each divided brush is called bristle. It is shown in the shape of a brush with a brick between the bristles for easy understanding. But in fact, the tire brush model is a continuum model in which bristles forms continuous body without a brick between the bristles. A bristle can be considered to represent the physical properties of the corresponding part among the entire brush. Uh, we can get the forces and the moments in the tire contact patch using uh, this tire brush model. Each bristle can represent a physical characteristics for unit length of the total area. Uh, these bristles represent all the physical properties that occur at the tire contact patch, not only in the transverse direction but also in the longitudinal direction or in the combination, including both of them. For example, the longitudinal force and the lateral force or their combination per unit length of the total area can be described using the deformation of bristles. Therefore, total force or moment can be obtained by integrating the deformation along the length of the road contact patch. The bristle model is the, is the easiest and the simplest model to understand the behavior of a tire on the tire contact patch. Let's look at the procedure for formulating a brush model for longitudinal slip analysis. Uh, since the longitudinal slip of the brush model can be used for both of braking and acceleration, from now on, for convenience of explanation, the longitudinal slip of braking will be mainly explained. During the braking, longitudinal slip kappa t occurs in the tire, and the amount of deformation of the bristles in the front part of tire contact patch along the x-axis increases linearly from the start point of tire contact patch to the point where the sliding starts, but from the point where the sliding starts, the formation of a bristle decreases non-linearly up to the end of tire contact patch. Uh, therefore, the bristles of the sticking region up to the sliding start, sliding start should be analyzed linearly. And the bristles of the following sliding region should be analyzed non-linearly. The overall order of a brush model analysis is to establish separate calculation formulas for sticking and sliding reason respectively, and to find the starting point for sliding, and then to integrate those formulas for sticking and sliding separately, and to sum those results up over the entire reason. Let's go through this process step by step. As the first step, let's look at the sticking reason. In the linearly deformed sticking reason, the amount of tire deformation increases linearly as shown in the figure according to the longitudinal slip kappa t without the sliding. In the brush model, the bristle base is attached to the tire side 
and there is no relative displacement between the bristles along the x-axis, but the bristle head in contact with the road surface has a relative displacement parallel to the x-axis, and the bristle head deforms linearly, linearly. If the stiffness of each bristle is defined as Cpx, the breaking force equation of a bristle can be established. Therefore, the order of obtaining the breaking force in the sticking region is calculate the bristle stiffness per unit length and find the deformations of bristles, then formulate the breaking force equation. How about the sliding region? The vertical force per unit length of tire contact patch along the longitudinal axis is defined as QZ. Assuming that QZ is distributed in a parabola shape along the longitudinal x-axis, the maximum breaking force becomes QZ multiplied by friction coefficient mu. In the sliding region of the brush model, the bristle base is attached to the tire side and has no relative displacement along the x-axis, uh, but the bristle head in contact with the road surface slides parallel to the x-axis and deforms non-linearly depending on the maximum breaking force distribution. As a result, relative displacement occurs between the bristles. Since the breaking force in the x-axis applied to each bristle is the value obtained by multiplying the vertical force by the tire friction coefficient mu, the breaking force in the sliding region can be obtained using the integral equation of the parabola in the purple section. Therefore, the order of obtaining the breaking force in the sliding region is assuming parabolic pressure distribution and calculate the maximum breaking force, then formulate the breaking force equation. The final step is to calculate the total breaking force per both sticking and the sliding region. Uh, we have to calculate the sliding start point at which the sticking region and the sliding region are separated. As shown in, in this figure, at the sliding start point, the breaking force in the sticking region and the breaking force in the sliding region coincide with each other. Using this, the x-coordinate of sliding start point can be calculated. Uh, once the, once the x-coordinate of the sliding start point is determined, the breaking force in the sticking region and the breaking force in the sliding region can be calculated by integrating the deformation equations respectively. And the total breaking force per entire tire contact patch can be obtained by adding these results together. Therefore, the order of obtaining the breaking force and the both of reasons is calculate the point at which the sliding start and integrate the equations separately and find out the total force by sum of f sticking and f sliding. The figure here shows how the bristle deforms when the longitudinal slip occurs during braking. In the pure free rolling, uh, all the bristles on the tire contact patch are perpendicular to the road surface. Uh, when braking starts uh, from the starting point of a tire contact patch, where the contact with the road surface begins, the amount of deformation per unit length gradually increases linearly, and accordingly, the braking force also gradually increases. When the braking force per unit length due to linear deformation increases 
to the same magnitude as the friction force per unit length, the linear deformation is no longer possible. So it enters a nonlinear region uh, where sliding occurs. As a result, the deformation of the bristles is reduced and the deformation of the bristles disappears at the end point of tire contact patch and returns to its original state. Continuously, let's look at how the bristle deforms when the longitudinal slip occurs during acceleration. In the pure free rolling, the bristles on the tire contact patch are perpendicular to the road surface. When, when the acceleration starts, from the starting point of tire contact patch where the contact with the road surface begins, the amount of deformation per unit length gradually increases linearly, and accordingly, the traction force also gradually increases. When the traction force per unit length due to linear deformation increases to the same magnitude as the friction force per unit length, the linear deformation is no longer possible. So, it enters a non-linear region where sliding, star sliding starts. As a result, the deformation of a bristle is reduced and the deformation of bristles disappears at the end of tire contact patch and returns to its original state. Let's look at the bristle behavior in braking. This figure shows the relationship between the deformed shape of the bristle and the slip speed during the infinitesimal time of delta t in braking. Uh, during the infinitesimal time of delta t, the bristle at the position 1 moves to position 2. And during that time, the moving distance of the wheel center is Vx delta t, which is equal to the moving distance of the bristle head. Also, during the same infinitesimal time delta t, the moving distance of, moving distance of the bristle base is Vr delta t, which is equal to a minus x. Here, Vr equals the angular velocity omega brake multiplied by the equivalent radius Re, which is called the linear speed of rolling. Also, during the same infinitesimal time delta t, the amount of longitudinal deformation minus u of the bristle is the slip speed Vsx of the bristle multiplied by the, by the infinitesimal time delta t. Let's look into the bristle kinematics in braking by rearranging the previously obtained equation A uh, for the slip speed Vsx, we can obtain the equation B. And by rearranging the equation uh, Vr delta t in the figure with respect to the infinitesimal, infinitesimal time delta t, uh, we can obtain the equation C. Here, all the velocities are positive and the deformation u is produced in the negative direction of x-axis during braking. So, it has a negative value. Arranging the equation related to the deformation u in the figure, we can obtain the equation D. Substituting the equation B and C into the equation D, the deformation u can be expressed as the function of wheel center speed and the linear speed of rolling along the x-axis as shown in the equation E. Let's learn about practical slip 
kappa p. The practical slip kappa p is defined as the equation f. Uh, using that definition and the equation b obtained earlier, the amount of deformation u can be expressed in terms of the practical slip kappa p. I will show you how we can do this. Arranging the equation E of the, of the deformation U obtained earlier and using the equation B of slip speed, the deformation U can be expressed as the equation G including the slip speed Vsx. Dividing the numerator and the denominator of the equation G by Vx respectively, and using the practical longitudinal slip equation F defined above, and then arranging the equation G, we can obtain the equation H expressing the deformation U in terms of practical slip kappa P. This time, let's learn about the theoretical slip kappa T. The theoretical slip kappa T is defined as the equation I. Using this definition and the previously obtained equation B, the deformation U can be expressed as the theoretical slip kappa T. I will show you how we can do this. Vx minus Vr of the previously obtained equation E can be substituted by Vsx using the equation B. Then, the deformation U can be expressed as the equation J, including the slip speed Vsx. Consequently, substituting the above-defined theoretical slip equation I into the equation J, the equation K can be obtained expressing the deformation U as the theoretical slip kappa T. Let's look at the longitudinal slip kappa T versus side slip angle alpha. It can be seen that equation expressing the deformation with the theoretical slip kappa T has the same form as the side slip equation explained in the previous video H53. As shown in the equations, tangent alpha of side slip equation is replaced by the theoretical slip kappa t in the longitudinal slip equation. As a result, all the longitudinal slip equations of brush model to be derived from now on can be formulated by substituting kappa t per tangent alpha in the side slip equation of a brush model. Therefore, from now on, the longitudinal side slip of a brush model will be derived using the theoretical slip kappa t instead of a practical slip kappa p. Before introducing the brush model, let's first consider simple mathematical knowledge to express the breaking force according to the theoretical slip kappa t. The equation of a straight line with the theoretical slip kappa t can be represented by the blue line equation as shown here. And next, if the straight line moves in the positive direction along the x-axis by the distance a, it can be represented as the straight green line. If the straight line moves in the negative direction along the x-axis by the distance minus a, it can be represented as the straight, straight red line. In these equations, a has a positive value. Now, let's determine the equation for a sticking reason. Uh, using the equation of a straight line, the deformation of tire at the tire contact patch can be expressed as shown in the figure. Uh, the green arrow indicates uh, the deformed length of the bristle head 
along the x-axis. Since the equation of the green line can well represent the linear deformation by the theoretical slip kappa t, let's use this equation to model the breaking force in the sticking region. In order to analyze the sliding region, first, the vertical pressure distribution of the tire contact patch must be expressed as a mathematical form. For this purpose, it is assumed that vertical load on the tire contact patch has a parabolic distribution along the x-axis. By substituting the coordinate values of the endpoint A and B and the vertex C, in turn into the standard formula of the parabola, three equations can be obtained, and the values of C and F and G can be obtained by solving them. Uh, by re rearranging this for Z, uh, we can obtain the parabolic equation here. Uh, this parabolic equation represents the vertical force applied to the each bristle. Alternatively, it can be calculated using the general form of parabola. By substituting the coordinate values of the endpoint A and B and the vertex C in turn into the general form of parabola, we can get the C1, C2, and C3. By substituting these values into the general parabolic equation, we can obtain the final equation here. We can get the same equation as before. Let's find the normal force distribution of bristles, the magnitude of maximum vertical force per unit length occurring at the center of tire contact patch is known as 3FZ over 4A in most tires, where FZ is the total vertical force of a tire. Substituting this value into D and substituting QZ into Z, the equation for load distribution function QZ per unit length can be obtained in the form of a parabola like the equation 2. Uh, the vertex C is not the coordinate of a tire contact patch, but as shown in the figure, it represents the maximum vertical force per unit length that occurs at the tire contact patch. Let's define the bristle stiffness. The figure on the left shows the shape of the bristles in the free rolling, in which the bristles do not receive any horizontal forces. When the bristles receive brake force, a theoretical slip kappa t occurs, and the bristles deform as shown in this figure. Originally, the bristles were in a shape perpendicular to the ground, uh, but with the braking force, they deform into the shape of green bristles in the picture with the linear deformation in the sticking region. The infinitesimal force dfx generated by the deformation area udx of the bristle for a unit length in the longitudinal x-axis can be expressed using the proportional constant CPX called the bristle stiffness. Let's keep going on bristle stiffness. The break, breaking force Fx can be calculated by substituting the previously obtained equation K into the equation M and integrating the total length of a tire contact patch. Uh, from the definition of a longitudinal stiffness, tire longitudinal stiffness can be expressed as a function of a bristle stiffness CPX and the length of a tire contact patch A. Therefore, the longitudinal bristle stiffness can be defined as the brush stiffness per unit length of a tire contact patch along the longitudinal axis when tire contact patch is assumed to be a rectangle. Let's look at the characteristics of a tire contact patch. 
The green straight line represents the distribution of braking force according to the linear deformation caused by longitudinal slip kappa t. And the red dotted parabola represents the maximum braking force distribution uh, that the tire can produce during braking, uh, which is equal to the value obtained by multiplying the tire normal force distribution QZ uh, by the friction coefficient mu. In the, green, in the green section located in the front of tire contact patch, uh, where deformation begins uh, during braking, tire is deformed in a straight line along the green line across the entire tire contact patch. Uh, but uh, from the point uh, where it begins equal to the maximum braking force distribution, the vertical force is insufficient to sustain the large linear deformation, uh, which initiates the sliding start. After sliding st occurs, the braking force distribution thereafter is determined along the maximum braking force distribution curve. Now, let's find the braking force of the sticking region using the br a brush model. If the x-coordinate at which sliding start is xp, the equation of the straight line passing through the point B with the longitudinal slip kappa t can be represented by a green line of the equation k. The bristles braking force Qx is the braking force per unit length of a tire contact patch along the longitudinal axis and can be expressed as equation n. Therefore, from the equation of infinitesimal braking force, the total braking force Fx produced in the sticking region can be obtained as the equation O by integrating the braking force Qx of the bristle from xp to a. In the next step, let's find the braking force in the sliding region. The equation of the parabola passing through the, passing through the point a, b, c can be expressed as the equation L, representing the red line obtained earlier. Uh, the bristles longitudinal force Qx is the braking force per unit length of the tire contact patch along the longitudinal axis. And since it is the value obtained by multiplying the normal force by friction coefficient mu, it can be expressed as the equation P. Therefore, from the expression of the infinitesimal braking force, the total braking force Fx produced in the sliding region can be obtained as the equation Q by integrating Qx from minus a to xp. And this time, let's calculate the x-coordinate of the sliding start point xp. At the point where the sliding starts, sticking force distribution line and the sliding force distribution curve intersect each other at one point. Therefore, the braking force Qx at xp must be equal to both the sticking braking force of equation k and the sliding braking force equation p. Using this relationship, we can formulate the equation at the point xp. Consequently, the sliding start point xp can be obtained as shown in the equation R. Since the sliding start point xp is obtained, the braking force for the sticking reason can be obtained from the equation O. By substituting the previously obtained equation R into the xp of the equation O, representing the braking force in the sticking reason, the equation S for the braking force F sticking in the sticking region can be obtained. Similarly, the braking force of the sliding region 
can be obtained using the integral equation uh, using the sliding start point xp by substituting, substituting the previously obtained equation r into the xp of equation q representing the breaking force in the sliding region the equation t for the breaking force f sliding in the sliding region can be obtained the total breaking force is the sum of the breaking force f sticking of the sticking region which is a linear section and the breaking force f sliding of a sliding region which is a non-linear section uh, therefore total breaking force can be obtained by summing equation s and equation t to obtain the equation u to simplify the breaking force equation it is necessary to introduce a factor lambda and a parameter theta x the factor lambda is a ratio of the distance from the beginning of a tire contact patch to the sliding start point xp to the total longitudinal length to A of tire contact patch. Please remember that A is always positive and XP is a coordinate value, so XP can be positive or negative. When lambda is zero, sliding occurs on the entire tire contact patch. And when lambda is one, Sliding does not occur on the tire contact patch. Using lambda, the position xp of a sliding start point can be expressed as in the equation w. Let's define the parameter theta x as this equation to simplify the expressions. Uh, since the equation r and the equation w are the same sliding start point xp the equation x can be obtained by substituting 0 for lambda to the equation x the longitudinal slip kt sliding at which sliding occurs over the entire tire contact patch can be obtained and the theta x at this time represents the function of longitudinal slip kt sliding using the factor lambda and the parameter theta x the previously obtained equation of total breaking force can be simply expressed the equation u representing the total breaking force f total obtained earlier can be simply expressed as the equation y using lambda and the theta x in the equation x you can find the equation x and y in Hans Pazeka's book Tire and Vehicle Dynamics 3rd edition let's find out the answer to the quiz what is the best description uh, for the tire brush model the answer to the quiz is number one Every bristle of a brush model has the same stiffness. Here we have a summary. Tire brush model is a bristle container model with a unit length of tire contact patch assumed to be rectangle and without intermediate bricks. Each divided brush is called a bristle, which represents the physical properties of the corresponding part among the entire brush and the tire analysis model can be derived using these bristles. Uh, when breaking, the beginning part of a tire contact patch deforms linearly, but from the point where sliding starts, it deforms non-linearly. Overall order of brush model analysis is formulate the deformation equation establish the breaking force equation of the sticking region assume the vertical load of the bristle is distributed as a parabolic shape 
and formulate the breaking force equation for the sliding region. Calculate sliding start point and then sum up the results from individual integration for the sticking and the sliding regions. If you watch the previous videos, you can easily understand the upcoming videos. In the previous video, E52, I explained the difference between vehicle drift and the vehicle pull based upon the side slip angle, steering wheel angle, and the steering wheel moment. Recently, in the video number H53, I explained how to calculate the lateral force and the self-aligning moment caused by side slip angle with the tire brush model and shows the process of deriving the related equations. The upcoming video will be the tire brush model part 3. I will explain how to analyze with tire brush model the case where the longitudinal and the lateral slip of tire are combined together. Please hit the thumbs up and catch the brand new videos by free subscription. So what are you waiting for? See you in the next video. Goodbye guys.